Cool, and we're now live. Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Thanks, Michelle, for putting that on there to remind me what day of the week it is. Today's Wednesday. Uh, yes, hump day. Um, Marina, why are you wearing a mask? So I'm wearing a mask because I'm obviously not, you know, I'm in a public area, so that's the reason. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that I joined today, so... I'm here oh. with the mask. I think there's some uh, YouTube issues. I don't know if anyone else could join, um, but I don't think it's working. Shall we get started though on our live? Yeah, let's get started and we can okay. play it later. Yeah, let's get started. Yeah. So we wanted to share some interesting, um, like interesting tools today. So if Michelle, if you could go ahead and start the slide. By the um, way, by the way, my name is Marina. And I'm Michelle. I just got a haircut. You can't really see it because I have this mask on. Um, but Michelle and I started reselling this hobby of buying and selling things online two years ago. And we are absolutely loving this journey. So thank you so much for joining us on the journey and we hope that we can um like you know we it's nice to to share it with other people and it's nice to um to learn from other people on a way to make money aside yeah. right so we both have regular jobs but we make extra money on the side well this extra money on the side there's so much that can be done with it right this yeah. can go into retirement money it can go into saving up for a house. It can go into paying off your debt. So the sky's the limit and it's really easy to get started in doing what we are doing. Michelle, would you mind removing the, there's like the happy Wednesday everyone sign so we could see your slides if you don't mind. Sorry. Oh wait, I wonder if I can remove it. Um, yeah, I don't know. No, I don't think I can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so there is a technical difficulty with YouTube currently. Got it. All right, so we're going to talk about tools for packing old TVs and VCRs. Yes. Oh, now it's working. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, so the reason why we're talking about this is because a lot of people have been asking us, you know, when they see the items we sold, they're asking, how did you package it? That's, you know, a lot of people are intimidated by packaging these type of electronics and big items. So we are going to talk about the materials and supplies that you need to ship a large TV or a VCR slash DVD players or electronics. Yeah, that's true. But let's be honest, for the longest time, we were also intimidated about shipping a television. Mm -hmm. Anytime there's like something new, it's extremely intimidating. And it stops you from, from acting. Now, there are not a lot of TVs available out there. But if you ever run across one, you know, don't be intimidated. Pick it up and, you know, you could probably sell it and ship it out, hopefully, after, you know, the rest of this video. <laughs> yes. And we um, we want to give credit to Vasquez Vintage because they, they helped us, kind of gave us some guidance as to how to package these items, especially the TVs. Yeah, especially the TV. So if you're not following them already, Vasquez Vintage on YouTube and Instagram. Yep. Um, so if you guys are um, shipping, you know, the most popular sizes for these CRT TVs, vintage TVs, they're either 13 inches or 19 inches. They go bigger, but, you know, for us, we usually aim to get the 13 inches ones. And you're going to need a 20 by 20 by 20 box, first of all. So that's the first thing that you need uh, are, you know, boxes. And then the 19 inches, you're going to need 20 by 20, 22 by 22 by 21. And for VCR, it's going to be 22 by 19 by 6. So it's important to get the right box to ship your item because you want to make sure there's enough room, enough wiggle room for it to be you know, to have enough cushion, but also you want to make sure it's not too tight. Um, hello, hello, girly girl style hubs. Hello, Bill. He just joined and he said Marina in a mask. 
Yeah. So you missed it, Bill, but I'm actually out and about. So I do have a mask on. I'm in an area. There's like a lot of people indoor. So I just want to be safe with a mask. Um, and Michelle, you're right. Bill said YouTube was having problems earlier. So sorry for being late. We appreciate you making it, Bill. Thank you so, so much. All right. Do you want to talk about the second thing? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we're talking um, about shipping like how to, sh what, what's it like tools? Yeah, sorry, tools that you're gonna need to ship like tube TVs and VCR players. So that's our topic for today. And so as Michelle's pointing out here, you're gonna need some foam. The foam is very important. You will need foam to cover the front and the bottom of the TV. And might I suggest even the back. So you wanna have one, two, three, three parts where you're going to cover the TV and foam. There's a lot of shuffling with these items. Um, they get thrown around. And if you, you know, if we don't have enough foam in there, they're going to break 100%. Yeah. So G, um, G Jasso says it's pitch black. Uh oh, what's going on? YouTube, I think it's YouTube. I, I think it works still on my screen. Um, G Jasso, I believe she is what my web promos. If I my web promos, that's right. Yeah. Um, yes. So we learned it the hard way. Um, you know, so far, knock on wood, we've been shipping these TVs successfully without breaking it. Um, however, there was a return, um, from the buyer and it was shipped from like the Midwest. Um, the bottom part or, you know, it, there was a crack. So we learned it the hard way. We got to make sure that you put foam on the screen, not just the screen, but also on the bottom of the TV. Yes. And just really quickly, um, G. Yeah. So uh, Bill is saying maybe try to refresh the app to see if it'll work, if it will work better. Because I guess there was some issues with YouTube earlier. Yep. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So make sure the foam is two to three inches. And at the end of this, we are going to provide a link where we have all of these tools where you can just click on them and purchase them on Amazon um, for your convenience. Yeah. So that's the first step is really protect all the, um, you know, the, the parts that are sensitive, which is the, the screen and the bottom. Um, so put foams around it. And the next thing you need is saran wrap. Um, this is how we do it is we make sure that we surround wrap the entire TV with the foam, making sure that the foam is really secured and attached to the TV. Yeah. And saran wrap is a, a great way to do that, to secure the foam that it doesn't move around. So you want to saran wrap each uh, piece of foam like individually one by one, right? So you have the one foam, saran wrap it add another phone, saran wrap it. So you're kind of like, you're building um, layers, right? So that's how you want to do it. And for, with, along with the saran wrap, we also use these paint blue tape. Um, the one thing that's great about these tapes is that you could, you know, put a tape on it and it won't leave a mark and it, it's really easy to remove it. Um, and we use these tapes to do two things. One is really to keep the cables intact um, so it's not flying around. And the second thing is we also use the tape to tape the foam around the TV to keep everything intact without really leaving any mark on the TV. All right, Michelle, but let me just stop you there because you mentioned earlier that you use a saran wrap to keep the foam in place. So do you use... The saran wrap or the tape or both? And which I one use, first? Yeah, so foam first, tape second, saran wrap third. Ah, so we said it wrong. So, okay, first you're going to take the blue tape. You're going to secure the foam with the blue tape and then saran wrap it. Thank you for clearing that up. Much appreciated. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Next one. Bubble wrap, and this is not just you know normal bubble wrap. We're we're looking at the big bubble wrap. Uh, the the bubbles are about the size of a quarter. So in our experience, we have used the little bubbles before, 
they didn't really work as well as these ones because you're probably gonna triple the amount of little bubble wraps in comparison with when you use like a big bubble wrap. So, um, you know, the, the, then the next step is really once you saran wrap it, you put bubble wraps everywhere, all over the, um, the television, from top to bottom, from left to right, making sure you kind of, you're creating like a giant ball of bubble wrap. Okay, okay <laughs> yes. Now there is a strategy to this. Um, the bubble wrap, first of all, needs to be between like, I don't know, minimum one inches, between one and two inches big. And like Michelle said, we're creating layers. So once you have, now the TV has eight sides, right? So you'll have to do like four sides at a time. When you do the four sides, make sure you add the tape and secure the bubble wrap tightly. Make sure that the bubbles are facing inward instead of outward, right? So we want you, um, sorry, we recommend that you do at least three layers of this mm -hmm. on the eight sides. So three layers of on the eight sides of the tube televisions. Now, if you're doing the VHS DVD, um, same thing, three layers, two to three layers, um, three layers to be secure. You don't need to use foam for the, you know, VCR or DVD VCR systems. Yeah, and VCR is actually a very delicate item because once you have some kind of impact, you probably can't use a VCR anymore. So um, may, you got to make sure, you know, when you bubble wrap it, you can't feel when you put, you know, after you bubble wrap it, you push your finger onto the item, making sure your finger can't really touch the actual item at all. And that's when you know it's secured. So that's a level of thickness is required when you know you want to inspect your item before putting it in a box that you cannot physically not physically but like there's a level of cushion in between your fingers your hands and the actual um machine that you're you're shipping out so a uh, comment from g yasso she said these are great tips <laughs> thank, thank you, you g. Yasso. we want to make sure you guys can you know, if you find these that you can ship them safely and have the confidence to do so because these items are, um, you know, they're our favorite to sell. So. Yeah, and, and so far we've been very successful. We haven't had anything that kind of not working at all when it arrived. So everything, everything our, I think our tips are pretty darn good in terms of like making sure you overpack the item. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping these really help you guys and your bottom line. Yes. So number four, number four is garbage bags. So we always just, you know, just to be safe, put the garbage bag around the entire item, whether it's a TV or VCR, because a couple of reasons, like number one, weather, right? If it rains or it's pouring, um, when a box is left outside, you, it, could, it could happen that the cardboard will be soaking wet, right? So this is one way to protect the item from water. But also, recent, more recently, along the West Coast, there's been a lot of fires, right? So we all know that that thick and heavy smoke that lingers in the air, um, whether it's by a fire or any other means, it infiltrates any, any material, right? It will absorb the smell. And it's really difficult to get rid of smoky smells in porous material. So this is another um, recommendation we've been giving out recently when it comes to shipping and packaging your items is to um, include a bag. You know, we can't obviously use a poly bag. These items are too big. So garbage bags have been working out well. That's true, especially electronics. You definitely don't want to get them wet. Okay, the next one is craft paper. So in an ideal world, we would be using styrofoam or those air cushioned, you know, those those air cushion, um, what do you call it? Like air filled bags, you know, when you get in packaging. Right, 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 right. Yeah, those are nice. Those are too um, complicated to get and they're, yeah. not, they're not cheap at all. They're very expensive. We've looked into it. So our um, fillers in this case would be craft paper. So. The ones that we get from Amazon, they are very thick and they could protect um, the TV and, on all sides and it would provide some kind of great cushion. Um, so we use craft paper to stuff everything in the box when you put the yeah. TV in. 
Yeah, exactly. So you want to start out by stuffing the bottom of the box. Um, you know, you want it to be at least two inches, two to three inches at least on the very bottom of the box. And then the same for all four sides and then the same for the very top of the box as well. Mm -hmm. So in, us, yeah. like, in other words, when you shake the box, there should be zero shifting. If you shake the box, you could hear something moving. You got to reopen the box and continue stuffing until you don't hear any shifting happening at all. Yeah, and Marina is always the, the stress test for me. She would always be the one like shaking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I want to make sure you know we don't have any issues if we could avoid it. And sometimes I don't pass the test, so I gotta read it. <laughs> All right, this next, next item. This is my favorite favorite tool. This is a box resizer. And what this does is, if you have a bigger box and you need to downsize it. You could use this tool to downsize it very easily um, with television, with VCRs. You're probably going to get a box that's bigger, um, and there's probably going to be space where you could save money on and save space on, and you use this tool. Um, what it does is it really creates a score. So it's a tool that has a little blade, and you can create a score on each side of the box and you use a cutter to cut the edge of each side of the box, the corners, and um, you could easily fold it and downsize it. Did I describe it correctly, Marina? Yeah, it sounds pretty good, yeah. So in other words, it's like um, creating a little, like little, not tears, but almost like miniature little tears to where you could just easily fold the flaps of the box inward, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine the flaps the box already has, you can extend those and make them longer and the bonus of this is that the box overall dimensions are smaller. And we all know, as far as, you know, for experience in shipping, that that can um, benefit a lot in lowering the cost of shipping with less dimensions to have to, you know, worry about. And like Michelle said, you're going to use the box resizer um, to mark the box. And then you will need a box cutter to cut the corners of the boxes. Then you can fold down the flaps, right? And the really cool thing, too, about these electronic items is that those extra flaps provide extra cushion on the top. So that's, that's always kind of nice. Yeah. So you so you stuff everything with a box. You downsize the box. So you're going, going to kind of, you know, tape the box. So obviously you're going to need shipping tape. We have um, experience using different types of tapes. And we definitely recommend Tape King. Um, this is also from Amazon. Their tapes are very thick. And, um, you know, sometimes when you like tear a tape, you can't find the edge of the tape. It's very hard. In this case, you know, this type of tape is thick enough that you could easily just, you know, um, find the edge of the tape. And I highly recommend this brand um, along with, you know, a tape gun because tape gun is always helpful for you to kind of, you know, when you like box things up, everybody needs a tape gun, especially. I have, with to, tape I have to be honest, though, and I have to let you know i don't like tape guns i like those little red plastic <laughs> tape yeah um like kind of like tape holders i don't know if you included that on the list but if not we'll add it mm -hmm. they're not bulky they make me they allow me to move quickly um i do agree with michelle on the tape king brand because we've used scotch tape brand we don't recommend it it's all scotch tape is almost too too thick and too mm -hmm. How do I how do I say this? Too shiny and slippery, and it doesn't allow us to work quickly. And I I feel like it easily comes off from the box. So yes, we we love this brand. Um, the other one, the the gun for the tape is fine, but if you you know if you want to be fast, I recommend the plastic ones, <laughs> the yeah. handheld ones. Exactly. Thank you for for saying that, G. Yeah. So the handheld ones. <laughs> um. Yes, I I agree. It depends. Tape gun works on certain items, doesn't work on certain items. Um, so the next thing is fragile stickers. These are super important, especially if you're shipping delicate items. We have learned we used to buy little fragile stickers. They're they're, you know, like it's like the first search result on Amazon. Um, they're small. We had a roll, but we noticed that we've been using three to four fragile stickers on each side. So I've decided, hey, why not buy a bigger one and just put one? So we um, recommend a six by four.
fragile stickers for these big items. Uh, they're very, very big and prominent. You could easily see them. And this one says, handle with care, do not drop, thank you. So it has all the messaging you need. On one yeah, screen. and on those four by six inch fragile stickers, as Michelle said, like with the VCR, we can do one on the five sides of the box. And then with a very large box for like a TV, we may do like, depends how big the box is. If it's a large TV, 19 inches, we may put a couple of stickers on each side. But yeah, as Michelle mentioned, I noticed it's less work, less stickers using the large stickers versus the little tiny ones. Yep. So that is it for all the supplies you need um, to package, you know, a VCR or a TV. Um, if you guys want to buy some of these, want to know where we get them, we do a link in our bio where you could check on Instagram. Um, and then we want to add another tip is really cool tip is if you want to make sure your item that is could potentially be a lamp or anything super fragile, put a box in a box. That is the best tip that we've ever gotten. So what you're going to do is let's say you want to ship this TV out and you want to make sure that it's super duper secure. You put that box in a bigger box and ship it out and it's going to provide probably twice the protection that you're supposed to get with one box. Yes. And might I add on to what Michelle said, make sure the outer box is a heavy duty box. So heavy duty boxes are extra thick. So if it's going really far away, like if it's going out of the country or um, just on the other side of the US and you're concerned, the box in the box with the extra thick heavy duty box on the outside um, and all of the tips that we provided tonight, I think you will feel pretty darn secure. I think we did that when we had a electronics that we were shipping to Canada. Um, and then the, the customer paid a good amount of money for those. So we invested a lot of money on shipping but you know what? Peace of mind on both ends was like the most important thing. And the box in a box trick is the best. Mm -hmm. 100%. <laughs> um, <Good> tip, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think um, people, I hope people would find this helpful because we do get a lot of questions about how to ship these TVs and VCR. So um, without further ado, we're going to go to our meme. Hello, New England, Betty Boop. Hi. How's that? You made it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Wednesday to you. It's hump day. Yeah. Um, Marina is wearing a mask because she's out and about. All right. Here's our meme. Marina, you want to go through it? <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> sorry. I'm just reading this for the first time. It's hilarious. Okay. So it says my parents had a TV like this. And so it's like one of those TVs in like the wooden console and then with the dials right she said and then it says i remember because i was the damn remote <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's hilarious um did, can anyone relate <laughs> did you did you do that when you were a kid no i didn't do that because when i was a kid there were remotes already but i can imagine <laughs> I can totally see that happening. Like, you know, the kid, hey, turn it to channel four <laughs> or something like that. Um, yeah. See, Bill, Bill says that he remembers this like it was yesterday. <laughs> oh, um, no. <laughs> that is that was just really funny. Um, so, yeah, uh, YouTube, YouTube's been having issues. So we're really sorry if you try to get on and you saw a black screen or you were not able to get on. Um, super duper sorry about that. I think, yeah, I think it's it's like all across the board, YouTube's having some issues. Um, but we do wanna say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Lizette said she was a remote too. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Um, yes, um, we wanted to also say, um, you know, it is Veterans Day, so happy veterans. Thank you to all the veterans for your service. Um, Thank you, we hold, we hold you dear in our hearts every single day, and and we're forever grateful. So, and Bill, and Bill is actually a veteran. So, thank you again so much for spending your evening with us. This is the highlight of our every single day. So, thank you to everyone who is here joining the conversation, and we look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. And tomorrow, we're going to be doing 
Bob Wilson. If you have any um, suggestions, feel free to send us a message. We are at the Flipping Gals on Instagram. Um, you can also message us on YouTube for recommendations. But you did talk about you wanted to talk about car models. Remember? We can definitely talk about that unless we have other suggestions. Okay. All right. <laughs> If we don't, we'll go with car models. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Have a good night, everyone. Okay. Wonderful. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.